this lesson, we're going to output the content of the data object that's being returned back from the fetch request, and we're going to write it onto the page. So let's create a few more variables. I'm going to create a variable called page. This is going to be an object that can hold our page contents, and it provides us some flexibility if we want to provide a page container. And here, I'm going to just use a document and create element. And the element that I'm going to create is just going to be a regular div. And this is where we're going to dump the page contents. And I'm also going to use the page main object and then document. And this is where we're going to select the main object that we want to post the content into. So I don't have to actually create one because I do have that section with the class of container. So let's use query selector and we're going to select the section object. And if you do have more than one section, the query selector will select the first one. And now we can use page. And here we're going to append. And the content that we're going to append is contained within page container. And let's give some content into the page container. So the page container and set up some inner text or inner or text content. And I'll set that to be hello world. So we're going to dump in within the page container. We're going to append it with the contents of hello world. So it looks like we're ready and we've got this page container that we can write content into. So next let's create a function in order to handle that. And I'll just create the function up, up, up here. And what this function is going to do is this is the one that's actually going to render the posts. So we could call it render posts and then it needs some data that's going to loop through and render the posts. And it's going to be expecting an array object so that we've got the data and using for each, we're going to loop through the contents of it. And each one of these is going to be a post. And then here, just as we did before, we're going to create a temporary div. So using the document, create element and creating a div. This is going to be the, the main container for each one of the posts. So as we loop through the posts, we're going to output the divs and we see that we've got a number of posts there. So all we're going to have to do is use the render posts and output the content of JSON data and posts because it's going to be expecting an array. So we're sending all of that object information into here and now we're rendering out the posts. So we haven't written anything out yet. Uh, so let's take the div and we're going to use the inner HTML method and I'll update some of the content that's contained within the post. Let's take a look at the post structure. So they are array based. So each one of them as we loop through, uh, I've got a title here for uh, within the array structure. So you also might find that it's an object within uh, these types of APIs. But in this particular case, it's just an array value. So the post is going to be an array value. So we we'll use the template literal. So the curly brackets and then the dollar sign post, and then whatever index number it is, the value that we want to output. So it looks like maybe we should output the contents of eight, and then taking the page container, and then using the append method, we're going to append the div to the page. And I got the dollar sign on the wrong side there. So now we're outputting the content from the API. And this is a template literal. So these are backticks. They're not actually single quotes. Uh, so make sure that you are pressing the backtick and that's beside the one key uh, to the left of the one key on your keyboard or on most keyboards. Uh, so template literals. And then to call a variable value in, then we use the dollar sign, the curly brackets, and then whatever the value is that we want to use from the JavaScript code. So it looks like we're able to load that content. And we're going to add some more structure to this uh, coming up, as well as add another element at the bottom that's just going to say that there's more content to be loaded. So whenever the person scrolls down to the bottom, they'll see this that, oh, it's loading, and it'll load more content into the bottom part there. So that's coming up next. So there's a, quite a few things that we need to still do in the upcoming lessons. So go ahead, connect to the API, render the content from the API, onto your web page and you'll be ready to move on to the next lesson.